All righty. Hello once again, race fans. You're listening to another episode of the NASCAR show on the grueling truth. I'm Alex Gray along here with Michael Klein covering some off-season news. And this is our first episode of the new year and I guess the new decade. I hope you, everyone's had a, a great holiday, a great Christmas, a new year, and everything else. We got a... We got quite a bit to cover, don't we, Michael? Oh yeah, it's been an eventful few weeks. <laughs> yeah, it, it really feels like it has been. Um, of course, things have really been kicking into gear. Chris Knight kind of hinted, even today, uh, Jan- which is January tenth, that we're going to get some silly season news, uh, especially today. Let me see here. And I do. Uh, Apologize, we do have some bad weather in my area in case I do lose connection and everything else. So, let me see here. Okay. Uh, First off, some silly season news today. Uh, Colleague Racing has announced that they are going to participate in their first ever NASCAR Cup Series race at the Daytona 500. They will field the number 16 frater- uh, Fraternal Order of Eagles car um, at the Daytona 500. So, uh, of course, Justin Haley coming in as the defending winner at the track and defending winner of the uh, Coke Zero 400. Um, they're, I believe they're also going to get uh, pretty much uh, the cars and equipment from Richard Childress Racing. So that's a, that's a really big deal there for Colleague Racing. I mean, yeah, anytime you have a series, a team moving up into the Cup Series, you know, it's a big deal for them, you know, anytime. But, you know, especially when you have the guy who's the defending winner at the track, and when also you're the defending winner at the track, you just got to remember they also won the Xfinity race the day before that. So, I'm sure this has got Paul Gray seems really excited for what they can do in the Cup Series. You know, I personally think it's going to be a bit of a slower transition for them. Yeah. You know, I feel like Colic Racing is slowly becoming a team on the rise. Um, you know, obviously they got the win with Chastain. Almondinger's been doing great in that car, too. Um, I can honestly see Haley and Chastain running, both running for the championship for uh, 2020 in the Xfinity Series. Uh, perhaps we may see Colic Racing do more cup races uh, of course, probably not until the Gen 7 or the next Gen comes out in 2021. Um, so, yeah, big deal there. Obviously, uh, I think Justin Haley is uh, – I think he's a sleeper. I think he's a very good driver. Uh, he had the breakout season in trucks in 2018. And um, he had a pretty decent season last year, didn't get any wins. But I really think he's going to step up and um, and get some wins in the Xfinity Series. And um, right now – I think we have about 43 cars that are going to attempt the Daytona 500. So that's that's good. We're going to have some go or go homers, and uh, we're we're going to have a lot of a lot of guys battling to get those final four uh, non-chartered spots. Um, other news: David Reagan, despite uh, his retirement, he will compete in the Daytona 500 with Select Blinds as a sponsor. Um, it will be a front row motorsports supported effort fielded by Rick Ware Racing, who is expected to get the FRM charter that is available for 2020. FRM scaling back to two cars. So those are some news that uh, broke out today. Uh, other news that has broken out recently. Uh, the grandson of Richard Petty, Thad Moffitt, will be driving DJR Crosley's, one of DJR Crosley's Fords, for the General Tire 200 at Daytona in the Art Men Art Series. He's been driving a lot for uh, the 46 for uh, Empire Racing, so it's uh, nice to see Thad Moffitt um, run a race there with DGR Crosley. Uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts on that since um, since you got your relations with uh, some ARCA guys? Yeah, it's uh, really good for Thad. You know, I've gotten to know him over the past few years because we both got into ARCA really at about the same time. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he helped out. He and he sought a lot of advice from Eric Cadell last year, which is who I was working for. So, you know, we have a pretty good relationship with him. Uh, so, yeah, it's definitely good to see him. You know, getting this chance. Just because, let's face it, DGR Crosley is way bigger than Empire ever was. So, yeah, this really could be like a big break for him. It really could be, you know, especially uh, a team like DGR Crosley. 
who I also consider is a, a kind of a team on the rise in the lower circuits, uh, made the, the big jump to Ford. Now, they picked up Haley Deegan for the Arca Series, um, and she's now a Ford developmental driver. So a lot's going on, or a lot going on for this team, and uh, there's a lot of a lot of promise, really. Um, I'll be interested to see how they do, especially in the Arca truck series, because they got a lot. I think they're going to get a lot of talent in those cars. Um, let's see, Chip Ganassi Racing. They announced that Advent, Advent Health will sponsor Kyle Larson in both the Bush Clash, which that's also some news. The Clash is now once again the Bush Clash at Daytona, which is uh, I think is incredibly awesome. Um, and they will also sponsor him in the Fall Kansas race. And they will sponsor Ross Chastain in a Ganassi-prepared car fielded by Spire Motorsports in the Daytona 500 and the Coca-Cola 600. So this is something similar to uh, a deal they had with Spire last year in the Daytona 500 when they fielded the 40 car for Jamie McMurray in his final Daytona 500. Uh, I think this is a, a big deal for Ross Chastain. Uh, obviously, he's clearly proven how talented of a driver he is. He's going to get some Ganassi preparation in those in those two races for those cars. So, you know, I expect him to get some uh, some good good runs in the '77 car for Spire Motorsports. Oh yeah, Let's definitely want to see how that goes. I honestly would have liked to have seen him in the 40 car, but you know, it's just a number, so you can't really complain about that. Yeah, exactly. You know, a number's a number. That's that's kind of why you don't have. I guess that's why you don't have retired numbers in NASCAR because I know people are like, if you don't retire the three, then you shouldn't retire 43 or 24 or 48 or, or whatnot. So um, uh, Colby Howard, an 18-year-old driver who's made a couple truck starts and uh, four ARCA starts, he will drive the majority of the Xfinity season for JD Motorsports. First race at Phoenix, sponsors PMG, according to Mr. Bob Pachris. Um Let's see, where can I find, of course, the uh, the big thing, too, um, are the pit road rules that they're putting in place for both the Xfinity Series and the Truck Series. Uh, and a lot of people have been, I guess, been 50-50 on these rules and regulations that uh, the changes they've made for the two lower circuits. This is not for the Cup Series. Uh, this is just the... Um, role changes for both Xfinity and the Gander Outdoor Truck Series. So, uh, back on Tuesday the 7th, um, they made uh, rules changes in select events for both circuits. Uh, this is effectively eliminating, quote, live pit stops in those targeted events. Uh, officials indicate, uh, according to NASCAR.com, officials indicate the changes are designed to enhance pitch strategy and to streamline the personnel performing pit stops at those specified races. Uh, the rules also place, uh, place limits on the types of service that teams can perform in each trip, uh, trip to pit row. Uh, they also pretty much put out the new procedures. If you're wondering what events they'll do this for, in the Xfinity Series, it'll be at Mid-Ohio, Iowa, and Road America. And then in the Truck Series, it'll be the Iowa, uh, Worldwide Technology Raceway, or Gateway, and Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. So the concept, um, let me see here. So the field is frozen when the caution is displayed. Stage breaks, full pit cycle, two opportunities to pit. Non-stage break, um, full pit cycle, two opportunities to pit. Optional quickie yellow, one, up, uh, one opportunity to pit. Um, the team roster will consist of eight crew members, the pit crew of uh, four to service the car, one fueler, and one driver assist uh, must be drawn from those eight crew members. The pit stop must be completed with a designated time period. And on the oval track, it says here that teams may add fuel and change two tires per pit stop. And on a road course, teams may add fuel or change four tires per pit stop. On the restart, in order at the time of caution, based on number of pit stops, in that following order, it'll be vehicles that didn't pit, vehicles that did it one time, followed by two times, and then the free pass wave around penalty vehicles. In terms of penalties, um, they will restart on the tail end if they exceed the time limit on pit road. 
Um, if involved in an incident, allowed, they are allowed to change four tires at once to avoid damaging the vehicle, um, pitting other than the designated lap. And then um, they get a two-lap penalty if they perform four tires and, and fuel on any pit stop. They change the tires of the green unless they approve by NASCAR for damage, and they perform four tires on any pit stops on the oval tracks only. Okay, so that's a, that's a handful. This kind of reminds me of, I think it was 2009, when the truck series ran, um, ran something like that, where you had the choice of going down the first time of taking fuel or tires, and then you take the other on um, the other way around. If you remember that at all, I'm sorry. What was that uh, kind of? A... Oh, I was. Oh, you're fine. I was comparing uh, the uh, these new pit stop procedures to. Uh, I think the truck series did this in 2009. With um, I think the rule was like you can go down pit road the first time and you can take either fuel or tires, and then I guess you come back around a second time and take the other. If uh, if I remember that correctly. Yeah, my memory isn't doesn't go that far, so I wouldn't be able. So I don't know that. Oh, it's no worries. Um, so let's see here. So yeah, it'll be across these seven events. Um. So, so uh, Peterson, uh, Eric Peterson, the technical manager of the Xfinity Series, uh, he said the rationale for implementing these rules uh, at standalone events was to provide efficiencies for teams instead of a reliance on a specialized pit crew members from cup teams. Um, two standalone Gander Trucks events were excluded, that being one at Eldora, which has roles unique to the Dirt Track Showdown, and June 5th at Texas Motor Speedway, where fuel mileage can come into play um, with the length of the race and its stages. I've also heard other news about how this is more necessarily going to be, let me see here, Okay, so Bob Parker has also, like, explained a little bit on it because it is kind of confusing, but essentially, uh, yeah, okay, Bob Parker also says that for those, like, races, uh, it will be lead lap cars, trucks that pit first time by, and then the lap down cars like usual. Um, let's see. In these races, you don't lose or gain positions on – here's the other thing, too. In the, uh, Bob Pockers also explained that in these races, you don't lose or gain any positions on pit road. Um, order on the restart is based on the position at the time of caution uh, with cars that didn't pit uh, to restart ahead of those cars that pit once, and then the cars that pit twice, and then the free pass wave around and penalty cars. So that's a little bit of a kicker there that you don't lose or gain any positions like you normally would, just, you know, like the battle off of pit road. Um, what are your thoughts on these new on these new rule changes for these selected events? Okay, well, first thing I think is that they're confusing as hell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> even I'm confused reading all this because I literally have to be like, okay, what were they again? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I'm also just kind of hoping it doesn't become, like, you know, the main thing. Uh, just because, you know, the light pit stops have always been a part of racing. And, you know, that's just mm-hmm. nothing I want to see go. And, you know, something that everybody trains for, you know, I've done it in the past. Uh, you know, there's a lot of training that goes into this. So, oh, yeah. you know, it's definitely not something that I would want to see, you know, replace what we have. Um, I would say doing it for the standalone events is probably a good idea just because a lot of those teams, you know, they fly their cup crews and their Xfinity crews. They fly their cup crews out to the Xfinity races to perform these stops, and that in itself is going to cost a ton of money. So this could be a good, yeah. you know, money saver for those teams and for the smaller teams since they're not going to have to invest in, you know, getting these pit crews trained, you know, to go do live pit stops. So it definitely has, you know, I think it does have its flaws, but – for certain teams, it could definitely work out. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I've noticed because, yeah, like you said, I just I can see where they're coming from in terms of that. I think if you do it just at the standalone races, 
I think it's fine, even though the rules are a little confusing. And I wouldn't be surprised if we may see some mess-ups in those races because of that. Uh, we'll, we'll have to definitely see how those races play out with the new with these new rules in place. So as a quick reminder, this is only for, like, if I want to say this again, this is only for a few races. It's only for, like, three races in Xfinity and three races in trucks. So they're all the standalone events, most of them anyway, that it's not like, oh, we're going to do this the whole season. No, it's just a few races, which if you're going to – I think that's as far as you can go. So, and you know what we ought to do for – I just thought of this earlier. You know what we ought to do for the next show? Yeah. We should write down what predictions – because a lot of people do them, especially on uh, YouTube, uh, what kind of predictions we can expect across all of NASCAR for the 2020 season. Like, you know, will this driver win? Uh, will Who will win the championship? Who makes the playoffs? And stuff like that. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. That would be right. a good video to try out. Yeah, I think that would be, I think that'd be a really fun idea. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, part of the bigger news there was the the new pit road rules that they uh, in place for these standalone events. Uh, let's see here. Other smaller news in terms of sponsors. So, obviously, both of us who are near the Cincinnati area, very familiar with Kroger, who sponsors a lot of JTG Derby Racing stuff. Uh, their new brand logo, according to Adam Stern, the new brand logo will be on Ricky Stenhouse's number 47 for most races, while Ryan Priest's number 37 will typically have a vendor partner. New partners include NOS Energy Drink, which they moved over, I believe, after sponsoring Stenhouse for a while in the 17, uh, which will have some primaries, plus Hershey's, Reese's, and Icebreakers, and Gillette. So we're seeing a return of brands from when we remember as kids. Uh, obviously, Gillette used to do the Gillette Young Guns so many years ago, and Hershey's and Reese's used to sponsor Kevin Harvick in the Bush Series as well. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't hear that. My dog is going crazy upstairs, so. Oh, it's no worries. I was just talking about the um, JTG Daughter Racing um we talked about it for the before we started the show. Yeah. Uh, the new, you know, NOS Energy, and then seeing Hershey's, Reese's, uh, Icebreakers, and Gillette coming back and being a sponsor for uh, Ryan Priest in the 37. Yeah, it's going to be fun watching all those. Awesome paint yeah. schemes getting out there. And like I said, I'm kind of hoping that they bring back the classic Reese's paint scheme like they had with oh. Harvick's Bush car back in the early 2000s. Oh, yeah. I Like I said, I want to see uh, – those are diecasts that will be uh, me waiting to pre-order. I'll add into the – I can't even count how many diecasts I have anymore, but you know me. I'm going to be like, I want that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm particularly looking forward to the NOS Energy car, you know, just because I may be kind of biased with this just because I compete in the USAC NOS Energy midgets, you know. But they do so much for the sport, and also those paint schemes have always been fire. So it's going to be so cool to see them getting involved with JTG. Yeah. Oh, yeah, especially uh, NOS Energy. And the other thing that I – speaking of NOS Energy, I think one thing that I'm kind of happy about with the new sponsor format we're doing, since it's now just the NASCAR Cup Series, um, perhaps now we can see stuff like – Monster Energy and NOS Energy kind of competing against one another as similar brands instead of, you know, because you know, I think back then, especially when uh, Sprint, when it was the Sprint Cup, you know, you started to see all the other telecommunication companies just kind of disappear. So hopefully maybe we can see the return of that. Like, you know, what if, you know, Sprint was on one card, Verizon was on another card, a different team or something like that. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, sure. Even after Sprint has left, I don't think we've had a single phone company getting involved in NASCAR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I remember, you know, back in when I first became a fan in 2004, I was a little kid, 
and eventually, my I think it was 05 that my dad got me my first ever phone. It was a Nextel i205, and I got the Dale Jr. cover that you could put together on the phone. And, uh, God, I loved those old Nextel commercials they did. They, some of them were so funny because they introduced the oh, yeah. walkie-talkie feature. One of them was uh, Jeremy Mayfield telling his, uh, on the walkie-talkie, telling his uh, hauler driver. Oh, uh, yeah. Right into Tony Stewart's car. Oh, it was great. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. You're good. And then there was another one. I think it was from 2006. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's what, that's what made me ever suspect that Mayfield was on something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I NASCAR needs to do more commercials like that, where these drivers get really involved in their sponsors. Like Michael Waltrip was so good with that with Napa. Like he was so good with that, especially the commercials that he and Dale Jr. did together. Oh my God, yeah. they, were, they were priceless. But yeah, the 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 other one I was referring as an example to was uh, it was Jamie McMurray and Casey Kane, and um, I believe Casey King was showing off the walkie-talkie, and then Jay McMurray takes out his helmet. Okay, but can your phone do this? And he pulls a rabbit out of his helmet, and Casey King's like, okay, how about this? And then he walks down. He's bringing the bunny, and his crew members just walk over, take the rabbit from McMurray, and give it to Kane. Yeah. <laughs> it was it, – that, I love stuff That's like magic. That. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then here's the other one. The Probably one of the biggest question marks – in terms of silly season, is Daniel Suarez. Um, It's been a tough situation, especially for him, because he showed, even though he was the lone guy at SHR who did not make the playoffs last season, he did show some speed and some promising results. And unfortunately, Cole Custer was ready to move up. Nowhere else available he could go. So unfortunately, Suarez had to get the boot for Cole Custer. It's uh, January 10th, and we haven't heard where he'll drive. But he, it says that he's currently working on it together. Uh, Adam Stern has said that he's still trying to put something together for a deal for 2020. His top option happens to be the Gott Brothers team, um, and followed by RCR. Gott Brothers would be a full-time cup deal. And then, uh, if I'm correct, RCR that would be something where I think he might run in Xfinity in kind of half and half Xfinity and Cup. Um, it also says that the sponsor situation is unclear, but Coca-Cola is expected to continue backing him, which could help him out a lot. Well, that would really help him with the RCR thing, since Coca-Cola is uh, one of RCR's most supportive partners. Yeah. Yeah, I think that – so. I think a lot of people seem uh, a lot of people are convinced, especially talking to some guys on Discord. A lot of people seem to be convinced that uh, uh, Suarez may end up going to Gunt Brothers in the '96, which it'll be nice to see another full-time Toyota team out there. But obviously, yeah, that's bringing that's bringing Suarez back into the TRD fold. Mm-hmm. So we'll have to wait and see. I don't know about. Or Aris, I'm not sure if he's still with Suarez or not, or what that situation is all about. Because I know they kind of were, ba- I knew they were kind of like backing Suarez, but I haven't, and they were on his car for a bit in 2019, then after that, uh, it wasn't on there as much. Uh, there was one other bit of silly season news that I can recall. Uh, David Reagan, was that it? Oh, yeah. Do we? I think we announced that David Reagan's going to run the Daytona 500 uh, in the 36. That's going to be a uh, front-row prepared car, and it's a charter under uh, Rick Ware Racing. The other one comes from Jeffrey Earnhardt's Facebook. Oh, yeah, I haven't so, heard this. Yeah, okay. January 6th, he just simply put, Quote, J.E.I. crew here, hoping everyone enjoyed a pleasant and healthy holiday season. Jeffrey and team have been working on the 2020 sponsorship efforts in order to maximize opportunities, as seen in 2019, when given the opportunity to pilot good equipment, and Earnhardt will race in the front of the pack. We will report back soon and wish you all a happy or a great new year. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I didn't hear about that or didn't see that. Yeah, because I'm not going to lie. I was a little worried for Jeffrey because, you know, he left JGR with the whole IK9 situation, and I think a lot of us felt a little confused as to what went on in that situation, and I was kind of worried, like, is he going to race again? Is he going to get a ride? But it looks like um, he's trying to piece something together because he's also been kind of quiet on social media since then, too. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. Mm-hmm. So I'm not really sure that, you know, I'm not 100% certain. Uh, oh, gosh, my Facebook went off. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure where he can end up because obviously – and I don't know what people have said. He's he's proved himself. Uh, yeah, he can run up front, uh, driving the 18, especially for JGR. He proved it. He almost won a couple times too. So I'm interested to see where he'll land. Um, another thing: Do you remember the whole thing with the money team racing when that got announced, like back in October or September? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I. I'm not really sure what's going on there or if, if anyone's known about it at all because I'm still curious to see if that is a team that will still happen. I so, doubt it. Yeah, unfortunately, I I don't feel too confident about it either. Um, I don't know if maybe this was something where they – it could be – it could fall into the list of uh, teams that could have been or – you know, because I think it said that Floyd Mayweather actually was not really involved with it, and that I guess like he used the licensing of the money team to, to for the for the racing team itself. Uh, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, Michael, you said uh, you've had a little bit of an eventful weekend. What's going on uh, in uh, your preparations for the racing season? Okay, so we managed to score a couple big partners for the season this past week. So yeah. let's start off with this one. Uh, I will be a member of Team K1 for K1 Race Gear for 2020. They will supply okay. all my safety gear. And the plan is to also work with Swindell Speed Lab, who, you know, is the biggest sprint car clothing manufacturer out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's actually owned by former NASCAR driver Kevin Swindell. Okay, so it's yeah. a pretty big name to be working with. And the next mm-hmm. one is that we managed to ink a partnership deal with ZMAX Race Products. So they will be our exclusive oil provider for the season as well. Oh, that's great to hear. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to representing those two brands. All right. And uh, in terms of racing, uh, what do you have coming up here uh, in the near future? Well, we got some more USAC shows coming up. Uh, I'd like to run the Winter Dirt Games at Bubble Raceway Park. It's just going to be a matter of finding the funding to do that. If we can't do that, I think the plan is to go to the Shamrock Classic to start the season off in March. And the stock car stuff is definitely still on the table for me. Uh, I would love to run at Nashville for the ARCA East Series and then run the Silver Crown Race the next day if we could work that out. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're doing everything we can to make sure I'm behind the wheel as much as we can this season. Of course. And best of luck to you, Michael. And we'll definitely uh, keep you. following up, keeping track, and uh, keep giving those updates. All right. Thanks, man. All righty. And uh, I guess the last thing we can talk about, speaking of ARCA, uh, ARCA finally got to hit the track for the first time in 2020. Um even though it was kind of rain-shortened, uh, it was the first of a two-day ARCA test at Daytona, uh, written here on NBC Sports. And let's see here. Out of 37 cars, out of 50 that were entered, um, Connor Hall of Chad Bryant Racing turned the fastest lap of 181.046 miles per hour, followed by Ronnie Osmore at 180.89, and Jacob Hitner with 180.843. Oh. Other notable names. Yep. Other notable names included Ty Gibbs, who was fourth fastest, the grandson of Joe Gibbs, at 180.825. Riley Herbst, who was seventh, at 180.552. Tanner Gray 
Uh, Haley Deegan was 18th with uh, 176.167. Sam Meyer as well with a 172.894. Of course, it's Daytona, and obviously a lot of these drivers are also getting the feel of the track, especially Haley Deegan. She's never hit a track like Daytona before, so I'm really interested, especially when the general tire 200 rolls around. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to be really excited for Haley Deegan and how she'll do. So, um it's all about yeah, looking the forward track. to seeing how she does this year. Yeah, definitely. And honestly, just staying in the draft. And for this race, you probably want to stay up front. <laughs> Try and lead the pack oh, yeah. and uh, stay out of the mess. Because the Arca Race Daytona can get a little crazy sometimes. And sometimes it ends. Yeah, I mean, I was there a few years ago when I think it took an hour and a half to finish the final lap. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Wasn't that like, uh, oh, gosh. Was it like 2017 maybe, or was that a little further? I think back? it was 2018. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, because in ARCA, they actually, if a wreck happens, I think on the last lap, they'll actually like redo it again. Yeah. So, yeah, and it used what, to be that they would do it unlimited times, but for Daytona and Talladega now, it's just one attempt after the white flag is flown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, and I think yeah. I think it was because of that race. <laughs> yeah, I think after that race, you look at that and go, uh, <laughs> we might need to look at our rules again. Um, yeah, but definitely the Arca dates on a race. It's going to be a show. It's going to be a fun show. We're looking forward to it. Um, let's see here. Is there anything else uh, we need to cover at all, Michael? I think that's about it. All righty. So. Uh, we've, we're all caught up now with the silly season news. The season is around the corner. We got the Rolex 24 coming up, in which uh, Kyle Busch is also going to run in. So I'll hey, probably can't forget the Chili Bowl, man. The Chili Bowl as well. Thank you for reminding me. I keep that's like one of that I keep forgetting about is the Chili Bowl because I know that yeah, well, that happened. You need to stop forgetting that, man. That's like the best race. That may be the best race in the world, right there. You know, don't yeah. at me at that. No, Nobody fight me on that. <laughs> All right. Don't worry. I, I will not cause any issues there. So, yeah, the Chili Bowl Nationals, January 13th through January 18th down in Oklahoma. So, yeah, I got the, the Chili Bowl coming up. You got the Rolex 24 as well. And uh, before you know it, it'll be Speed Weeks at Daytona. So, thank you guys so oh, much. Man, for, can't wait. Oh, same here, man. Especially yeah. once the Super Bowl is over, man. Which I, I don't, you know, obviously we all watch football. It's not wrong with it, but I'm just like racing, man. I want to get back to it. So I'm really looking forward to it. I think we have a fun season ahead of us. Next episode, we're going to we're gonna try and get some predictions together and see what we think what will happen in 2020 with all that fun stuff. From Michael Klein and myself, Alex Gray, thank you guys so much for listening to this week's edition of the next car show on the grueling truth, the first episode of 2020. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time.